ATV World Sana Makbul, and right now we are in Natya Gali, and as you can see, we're seeing one of the first falls of the season in Pakistan, and it is uh, really beautiful and very nice to see that. There's a little trying to hear the sounds, but we're going to be conducting a really important show, and I hope that you enjoy that as much as we are doing right now. Um, we are currently at a winter retreat after the first Startup Grind conference in Pakistan, which was held on the 5th of November. Um, and it aimed to bring about different mentors and experts from the tech community from within Pakistan and abroad also, bringing together these people to inspire young entrepreneurs in Pakistan and the startup community in Pakistan to be able to use technology uh, for the successful economic growth of the country and making sure that the people who have the talent and the skill are able to contribute towards the growth of Pakistan. And such conferences are really important in trying to establish the links uh, between um, people all around the world who have achieved uh, um, success in their respective fields and can share their experiences to inspire uh, young people in our own country uh, and to make sure that they are also able to follow a similar path. So right now, after the conduct of this conference, uh, we are here at the Winter Retreat in Nathya Gali and I have with us uh, some of the people who are part of the uh, organization of this conference, some of the people who are here from abroad who are going to share their experiences uh, and their expertise and what they see are uh, the main challenges or the main requirements for the people and the youth in Pakistan to be able to grow and uh, use technology and uh, use such forums as Startup Grind um, for their own journey and for their path to success. And we're going to ask them what they want to do in order to contribute towards this goal as well and what they see is the future of the tech community in Pakistan. So without further ado, let me introduce our guests uh, right now. We have with us uh, Mashood Alam, who is the Senior Director of Product Management, SAP Arabia. Thank you for being with us today. And we also have with us Serena Chang, who is the Market Engagement Lead at Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation. Thank you, Serena, for being with us. We've also been joined by Chapter Director Startup Grind Islamabad and CEO Ijad Labs, uh, Mr. Arzish Azam. Thank you very much for being with us. And lastly, we also have the Senior Advisor for the City of Oslo's Department of Business Development and Public Ownership. And she's also a board member of the Oslo Innovation Week. We have with us uh, Kristen Anderson. Thank you for being with us today. Well, I'm going to start with you, Arzish, since, of course, you're part of the, uh, this, this first a startup grind conference in uh, Pakistan and uh, you were able to organize this and bring together people from all around the world and within Pakistan also uh, in a shared community to achieve shared goals. Uh, tell us about what exactly is it that you do and um, why did you uh, think there's a need for the startup grind conference in the country? So I, I represent Startup Grind in Pakistan, which happens to be the world's largest community of startups, the largest network of startups operating in 600 cities, 125 countries across the globe, right? Uh, what's really interesting is that we only have five conferences around the globe because the conference is like really, it, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of amazing speakers to organize a Startup Grind conference. So, so far we have this in Silicon Valley, London, Melbourne, Barcelona. But this is not just the first one in Pakistan, Islam, but, but this is also the first one in, in all of Asia, right? and we have seen some tremendous response in terms of all these uh, speakers coming who have joined us on this show as well but other than that there are like 50 people who you know flew in from silicon valley from london from canada from malaysia from all the tech hubs of the world to come to pakistan to share their journeys to kind of uh, help us take pakistan forward in in its digital journey right and a lot of people came from within pakistan to attend this conference there were like more than 1500 attendees professionals entrepreneurs startups coming to learn from them connect with them and essentially meet a lot of investors who joined this conference as well we had some of the largest VCs from this region you know from China from Dubai uh, almost everyone who's ever invested in a Pakistani company joined and representative of the government of Pakistan you know Ali Jangir Siddiqui joined Ali Zaidi Shabbar Zaidi all these people have joined to kind of show their support and show the support of the government of Pakistan to increase and grow the tech economy of this country. Right. 
Um, I'd also like to ask each of you to also describe exactly what uh, your participation has been in this conference in particular, and then of course in general what you're doing um, uh, with respect to uh, your particular fields as well. Christian, I'll start with you and then we'll move here. Yeah, so thank you. Um, so I met uh, Ashish uh, um, in, um, during South By because he was uh, mentoring uh, a, a startup that had been to Oslo uh, three years before. And he was part of a also Karachi Startup Challenge that um, brought four startups uh, to Oslo uh, for one month during Oslo Innovation Week 2016. And that also um, became, you know, a, f a friendship. One of the startups is now living in, in Oslo. Um, he went to uh, two years university and is now uh, working in a Norwegian startup. And um, the other startup was an at um, South by pitching uh, Quickflex, and um, uh, and then I met Arsis, and then he said, "Ooh, I want to come to Oslo too." So I said, "Sure, come." And then he didn't come alone. He came with like <laughs> 50 um, high, you know, skilled tech people from the ecosystem, and that was amazing. So uh, we had a great time, and we had an um, international event in the city hall, and uh, also with the other international guests. So, and one thing is that the Norwegian, we have a large uh, Pakistani diaspora in Norway. And uh, I think this was an eye opener uh, because they came for, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So that a lot have happened since. And uh, I think we can do a lot of good work on that. Both attracting talent to Oslo because, the, you know, we need high skilled tech talent, deep tech, but also the other way around, and that's why you might ask why why is the city, <laughs> a, a city government interested in this? And also has taken the lead in the green shift. So we want to be uh, emissions free in 2030, and we can be a test hub for other cities to see what works, and then they can adopt and 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 scale it. So I see this as if something that we have implemented can be scaled in Pakistan on the waste to energy or um, clean water or, you know, um, right. so, yeah, so that's also my aim. And also this is potential huge market for the startups in Norway. And we have Telenor. And also I would like to mention, before I give away, that, um, my good friend Afa Ahmed, who uh, created KITE, Karachi Institute of Technology and Entrepreneurship. And he did that to um, get the entrepreneurial spirit into the ecosystem into the uh, education system and that's so important thank you right of course we'll talk more about of course the uh, pakistani diaspora especially as you mentioned and what um uh, we can do in collaboration with norway serena why don't you go ahead next hi i'm serena and um, i'm from malaysia digital economy corporation we are a um, government agency based in, um, in kuala lumpur that focus on developing the tech ecosystem so what we believe is um, a partnership across the globe right um, we cannot just um, survive in malaysia we are looking into um, our friends all around and how to grow this ecosystem ecosystem, this tech ecosystem into more inclusivity and more diversity even in our own local. So I was invited by Aziz to come here. Um, honestly, I, I do not know anything about Pakistan or, and things like that, right? So he said like, um, come check it out, come and see, you know, but I'm, I'm really flawed. Is by this what your I first see. time? In yes, the my first time okay. in here. So I'm really flawed by what I see. I see so many potential, so many things we can work together. And I can see so many cross collaboration, like, you know, how I can bring my Malaysian startups to Pakistan. And then I'm, I, I'm inviting Pakistani startups to come to Malaysia and to explore Southeast Asia, you know, like together we become better and we'll become like um, stronger together. And this is what my goals are here, actually. Thank right. You. Okay. Mr. Mishu. Yeah, so um, I've come from Silicon Valley and uh, I drive uh, innovation and transformation uh, with world's largest corporation as part of SAP innovation um, team as well. And part of my reason why I came over here is when Erzish came and meet with us, he told us about his vision about uh, how to bring the uh, ecosystem together. Um, we were frankly not sure um, what to make of it, or what are we getting ourselves into, uh, but we just took the leap of faith and we uh, saw uh, that he was really passionate about it. So uh, a lot of us came from Silicon Valley and uh, uh, 
uh, we have tremendous amount of knowledge, experience, and expertise uh, that we brought with us in addition to um, connections to the investment community over there. And we were really um, pleasantly surprised by the level of energy that we have seen in the conference, the number of entrepreneurs, uh, the number of young folks who are studying right now or even just coming out of high school. And they, um, their vision of the future is that they don't want to be just corporate employees, but they want to build businesses. They want to solve problems. Innovation is essentially nothing but identifying the problems and then solving them through technology. Uh, we also I, um, found out that there's a lot of uh, um, tech talent which is in Pakistan. However, there is a need for honing that talent um, and polishing that talent uh, where our expertise can really come in handy. So my goal was to come and experience firsthand what is that ecosystem like. And frankly speaking, how can I contribute back to Pakistan? Because I am from Karachi, um, and, uh, and, and Pakistan is the foundation through which uh, my career has taken off. Mm. Um, so that was the goal. And uh, the other part was that I ran these two-day retreat here in Nathia Gali. Uh, this was amazing where uh, we had um, a lot of selected entrepreneurs, some business leaders, uh, some investors, and folks like Kristen and Serena over here. And the goal of this was to really help brainstorm on the ideas of a better future for Pakistan through innovation and entrepreneurship. So through the course of the interview, I can talk more about that. Sure. What I'm getting from speaking to all of you is that um, the three of you, as you spoke, said, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you were pleasantly surprised about the kind of potential that you saw in Pakistan and um, the skill and talent of the people here. And that perhaps goes to show that uh, maybe um, there isn't um, a lot of awareness about the fact that there is so much that the people of our country can do or our youth can actually put forward in terms of entrepreneurship or their startups. So like you said, nobody, not everybody wants to do um, a, a job and they want to run their own businesses as well and they have their own ideas to put forward as well. But maybe they don't have the right platforms, so they don't know where to go or they're not linked with people all around the globe. Arzish Hassan, I understand you, um, your um, uh, um, actions towards whatever that you do are aimed towards empowering the youth of the country to achieve that. Um, uh, tell me more about exactly what you what you saw as also part of your own journey as what was lacking or what needed to be done to be able to connect um, startups or entrepreneurs in Pakistan and our youth uh, with the right people or the right channels and to sort of bring up this community and making sure that they strive and progress. Yeah, so thank you so much, Sana. So essentially what we do is called community building or ecosystem building. So, so the concept is very simple that if you need to build high growth, high net worth startups, you know, which are tech companies from a city or a country, you need to build a supportive uh, ecosystem around them. Right. So this ecosystem could be incubators. There are a lot of incubators who have supported us, including the National Incubation Centers by Ignite, uh, you know, NUST, PITB, all these other organizations which have been working for the past five, ten years to help startups, help entrepreneurs grow. Uh, but then there, there are the mentors, there are the founders, there are the investors who become part of this ecosystem, who, which which essentially becomes the catalyst to produce high growth companies, right? So over the past two years, we've seen, you know, companies like Baikian, Airlift, and uh, all, all these other amazing companies which have, you know, started in a year or a year and raised five million, six million, twelve million dollars, right? Which is huge. They've impacted impacted lives of you know hundreds of thousands of people a and then there are companies which are started by pakistanis either you know within pakistan or outside pakistan uh, but have used pakistani talent right so there's kareem which is you know a unicorn a one point a 3.2 billion dollar exit right there's a company named Cavium, which was sold by a pakistani who lived in silicon valley he came for this event he spoke at this event as one of the headline speakers so essentially what we're trying to do is you know uh, number one recognize all these amazing pakistanis who've gone out from pakistan who've done considerably well who are leading the global tech economy and bring them back to pakistan right and when we say bring them back to pakistan not just you know, bring them and hold them here. <laughs> Let them grow. Their ideas know. or their experiences. Absolutely, absolutely. Because, you know, the, they, you know, Mashood sitting in Silicon Valley, all these people sitting in London and Toronto, they are in the position to help Pakistan, help grow Pakistan. But how will that 
happen if we don't even connect with them, if we yeah. don't even bring them back or go to them. So we go every year to Silicon Valley. We've been to Oslo, thanks to the help of Christian Wright. We'll hopefully go to Malaysia and all these other tech hubs to connect Pakistani entrepreneurs there. And then we'll keep inviting more people to come back to Pakistan. So number one, we can celebrate them, but also we can connect them to the entrepreneurs who are working on the grassroots level, right? So people who, number one, don't even know that these you know, these amazing globally successful uh, leaders are Pakistanis, but also don't have the access available or don't have the means to maybe travel to Silicon Valley or meet them. So we want Startup Grind, which will happen every year, which is an Elwin conference, right. to become this platform which, you know, connects the world to Pakistan and Pakistan to the world. Right. Mishun, I'd like to ask you further about what uh, um, Arzish mentioned, the fact that, of course, you're a Pakistani and you're sitting in Silicon Valley. Perhaps you being um, somebody from the country as well, maybe sort of is able to understand the local challenges better than perhaps um, the rest. Um, how do you see um, your role in terms of being able to, um, when we're linking the, to, to, to the two communities, uh, in terms of um, understanding the local challenges that the people and the youth face here and then um, trying and redefining or remodeling the strategies that you think are successful in a way which um, uh, the youth in Pakistan can also employ that works locally for them and that they're able to uh, use them for their own experiences. Yeah, so there, there, are, there are many angles to, to our question, so I'll try to address some of them um, over here. So a part of, uh, so I and a lot, of, a lot of other folks that came from Silicon Valley right now, they moved to the States 20, 25 years back. Now at that point, we had pretty much no guidance at all and what to do. So we kind of learned ourselves, found our way over there, uh, learned about technology, learned about how businesses are built, how business problems are solved, how consumer problems are solved, and so on and so forth. Um, what uh, my um, interaction with these startups uh, is that these startups are, a lot of these entrepreneurs are in very raw form. They have some cool idea of a tech gadget. They are very good at technology. But what they also need to understand that they need to understand what problem you're trying to solve from the perspective of human beings, right? Because at the end of the day, technology actually solves the problems of people and you, how to do that. So I bring my expertise in terms of how to understand those problems. Second part is the learning mindset. Uh, that learning mindset means asking the questions. It's not just about finding the solutions. You have to ask the right questions, the importance of that. Right, so I think all these aspects, that's where I'm trying to, I'm already connected with some of these startups and entrepreneurs and some of the um, ecosystem over here so that if I can, whatever time, time is the most valuable mm. commodity and we do not have that much of a time yeah. working in Silicon Valley. So we try to see how best we can connect with these entrepreneurs um, and provide our expertise. It's not just about raising funds, it's about helping them convey their message in a proper format, right? Right now, a lot of what we heard is that entrepreneurs are great in technology, but they cannot convey their message. Yeah. So that part is really important, how to do that. We learned over the past 20, 25 years working in the in the business with top corporate corporations to really understand what exactly um, that means, the importance of messaging and, and so on and so forth. So all these aspects, uh, technology linking to the soft part, which is the hardest. It's a lot of uh, the times sure. being able to do sure. that. So that's what I'm trying to do. How can I give back and with my expertise to these uh, these young entrepreneurs? Okay, Serena, it, uh, let me come to you in terms of, uh, as you mentioned that of course, um, somebody who's um, who has an idea or knows about technology or knows what they want to do, but then um, for coming from that to actually developing a company or putting forward uh, whatever it is that they're offering to the people is is a huge journey, right? Mm -hmm. And um, as I understand that you um, uh, are working in the fields of management and business strategy and all of that, um, how would you like to elaborate on exactly how do you think that this um, this process, what, what sort of things this process involves and how it actually comes about to developing into something tangible for the community? Yeah, so I think like as Mashut put, uh, puts it, right, so what's important is what problems are you trying to solve? If you have a problem that you want to solve and then um, take that idea, pair it with technology and take it to market and then understand your market well, like, you know, I... This. Pakistan have no, in terms of market, you have no limitations. You have 200 million population. So you can have a really um, solve a lot of problem and that is really crucial just in your own market. 
so you, so you know like you know don't think about like the first step is to how to go outside and there just solve the own problem in your market like um we take examples from indonesia they have like four or five unicorns that is primarily focused on their own market only so why not in pakistan right why does it have to be a global one to be a unicorn so i think this is what people need to focus on like to, to solve your local problem cater to your local market in order for your business to grow Right, uh, Christian, um, I would like you to add on this as well uh, in terms of um, uh, your experiences with the Pakistani diaspora and also working in Oslo itself uh, in terms of how people can actually look towards local problems and solutions and challenges and they face and then actually come up with solution working towards that. I think I can say that w when you travel around you meet entrepreneurs and you feel like they kind of, they, they, they see the world a bit the same way but they want to know what the problems are and then they want to solve it. And I think that's a mindset that's really crucial uh, to embed in young people, that they should ask questions and they should, you know, not accept because it's always been like that, you know, yeah. they should keep on asking questions and explore. And I also feel that the governments in some way, and I'm a bureaucrat so I can say this, is somewhat also quite same, that they uh, want to do mm. what they've always done uh, they're very siloed and um, it's difficult for uh, new um, people coming to the market. Like Oslo, uh, cities, the city of Oslo are buying for 38 and investing for 36 billion Norwegian mm. kroners, like 3.8 approximately dollars per year. And um, that is a lot of money that we could use into the ecosystem. So we now have a new uh, platform, political platform, that are pointing that out. And I'm really excited about that. But it's also important to do the design thinking to see what are the, I mean, what is the core problem? Not what do we think, but what is the problem? Right. And I think if you do that, your policy will be a lot better. And also we have another driver for this uh, politically, uh, and that's the climate budget. So we do have a climate strategy, which it's uh, made together with indus uh, the, um, the industry. And we have a climate for business or a climate for industry network. But that said, we also have made a climate budget where we count money the way, uh, or we count emissions the way we count money. And that makes uh, the city government, um, it, it gives them a holistic view because they, are all accountable. It's not just the uh, the uh, vice mayor of uh, of um, environment. Right, and Kristen, you also work towards lowering barriers between the public and the private sector. Right? Yeah. How important is that? It's very important. Mm. And and so you need you need to um, educate both the buyers and 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 also the startups because the startups when they r reach out to the to the government or the city government, um, they, it can be a clash because they are, might not have the agenda all you know ready or you know, but they have they have a passion and they have something. So you need, I think you need uh, somewhat um, someone in between, someone that can translate between the 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 startups and the needs of the of the city, and we have a, a, a city-owned company called uh, also business region and they are the ones that are the project manager of the also innovation week and they also do a lot of startup days so coming to also it's really easy to set up a company it's like really digital but you also need if you're not going to be hired by a company in norway uh, you need uh, that's not so easy so mm -hmm. we're working now to push the central government uh, to start have a startup visa or a investor visa from outside eu and I think that's also important because um, the exchange of talents and, and the possibilities we have, it's just enormous. Arsish, I would like to ask you, do you think that everyone can be an entrepreneur? Anyone can be anything, it, only if they want to. Right? Okay. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, you will be. But it's not like, you know, it's, it's something that's, uh, you know, like by birth or something. It, you do you know. find that a lot in the, pa in the Pakistani community? So Probably, you know, in, in this region, so South Asia and, you know, the, the Indus region, everyone is an entrepreneur. So even people who are doing jobs, they're always doing something which is called a jugad in, <laughs> in a lot of things. Right. So we have a very entrepreneurial mindset in, in this whole 
uh, region, right? Which which you see translating into uh, success, right? So there are a lot of Pakistanis who have not just built companies inside Pakistan, but again, you know, outside Pakistan. So that really gives you an idea of what Pakistan is as a nation and then people can achieve. We just need to, again, uh, document that and yeah. recognize them to uh, make this happen. Right, Kristen, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I think you can teach to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, but uh, that said, I don't think that everybody needs to become a startup. Or, But I think that everybody should look in their life and see, okay, what can I do better? Because it has to do with the ongoing process on doing things better. Um, either the product or the service or, you know, the traffic or, you know, and, and it starts with themselves. Right. Yeah. But sure, then you, of course, in the workshop yesterday also talked about the power of mindsets and all. And I want you to talk about, we, you, earlier you mentioned the learning mindset and then Arzish was talking about an entrepreneurial mindset. And considering your experience with the Pakistani community or in general, how important do you think that is to inculcate that sort of culture? Can it be or uh, is it not possible? And I, um, in the course of uh, the workshop, I mentioned about uh, the stats about the creativity. 98% of kids born are in creative genius category. By the time they reach adulthood, it goes down to 2% only. So our environment, our culture, our education system sucks their creativity out of it. So I think that's something we need to transform, which is a longer term structural aspects. In terms of mindset, so absolutely, when we did this retreat, we had a part of creativity is to imagine a future, and that's what distinguishes human beings from other creatures. We are able to imagine a future which is not there. And then we are able to figure out a way to get there. If you look at all the science fiction movies of the 80s, they are pretty much now reality. So, so we imagined the future of Pakistan from the perspective of how the ecosystem, the startup ecosystem would be playing out, the government would be playing, the Pakistani diaspora outside and inside the, organ, uh, the country, uh, educational institutions and other areas. And then we, we're able to identify, look at what are the barriers that we are facing, but also one of the key barriers are the mindset, mm -hmm. which are the personal mindset, institutional mindset, and national mindset. We have to be able to change that. If we were to make Pakistan successful, the one thing which is very important is mindset, and it is changeable. My experience is that if you create the right environment and what Arzish and the team has been able to do, you start changing the mindset. And I think that's that's absolutely but doable. But it takes a long time to do that. It is a long, long mm. time. And and changing mindset means showing some of the success stories. Yeah. And that's what we are doing over here. We share a lot of success stories. Hopefully more and more people will be able to see that. So then they start believing that, hey, if this person is able to do that, I can be able to do that. Right. So I think there's a lot of aspects. I, I know that mindset change is very difficult. We generated tons of but ideas. Right. Yeah, but I think some of them are to do with mindset. I think this could be done. Right, and of course it's extremely difficult and perhaps very time consuming also, but then that is the one which has the most far reaching consequences as well um, in terms of actually changing uh, and uh, uh, helping people to come towards. So just, just to one, one, one more thing if I may add is our ability to communicate. In our, I remember the first time I was given the opportunity to present something was in the final year project of NAD. If I look back, my kids in U.S. who are studying, before even kindergarten, they are presenting their ideas. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is that, that if I yeah. able to, if we are able to communicate better, right, then we are able to even communicate and challenge our long-held beliefs inside our families. Yeah. A lot of our families, the kids cannot speak a word in front of their parents or their grandparents. We should be able to communicate in a respectful manner our ideas. And those ideas will be challenging their long-held beliefs. Guess what? Uber was formed by breaking the long-held belief that do not ride with a stranger. And now yeah. it's a $60 billion company. Yeah. And same goes with Airbnb and other companies too. So I think being able to, if we start com helping our kids and, 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 and young people learn to communicate better, I think we'll, we'll make a huge progress. Right, and I found it really interesting when Kristen, you said that of course when we break it down, then entrepreneurship is basically la finding solution to a problem, right? And yeah. bring that forward. So you don't have to be a startup for that to be considered an entrepreneur. And that can start on a very young level as well. And it needs to to be able to uh, for us to inculcate that culture, that mindset that we're talking about, right? So how young do you think 
uh, we can start working on this and what sort of um, ideas or strategies need to be added in perhaps into the educational institutions or the way that we are teaching our children to come forward and bring about that sort of mindset where they are looking at something and they are thinking about a solution? I think that is a very good question and um, first I, say, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, and it has to do with uh, the parents have to let children ask questions and be um, and think about it as a lifelong learning. I yeah. mean, if if you I even if you're old, that does not mean that you have all the answers, and that does not mean that the young people shouldn't learn from the old because they have a lot of experience. That's why I tell my kids when they start questioning me, I say this out of experience: put your jacket on, <laughs> kind of, you know. So I, I'm saying, of course, I you have to listen p to what your parents and elders say, but they should also listen to you. And I think if the co they manage to do that environment, then people will get, uh, they will maybe keep being curious. And I think curious is a good thing to bring and also be a bit... Um, when yeah. you're in a rush? Yeah, a rush. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I also think that um, the schools also then have a, a good uh, because the if you look at the school situation now in hundred years ago, I mean you have changed blackboard f uh, for whiteboard, but it's basically the same yeah. operation. Yeah, and you really need to disrupt the school system. I think that and with technology, you really can reach everyone. And if you also add that into free or at least uh, internet that's available for everyone, I think that's um, that's a good start. Right, and um, but it's also important not you know to have the meeting places, and that's wh why you know both the, the disrupt O two one disrupt in Karachi, and also uh, the startup grind is very important, and also Innovation Week because you need to you need to meet, and that's where the communication is coming in because when you meet you see that okay we are not talking the same language but you know we want the same thing how yeah. how can we do that yeah and i think that's important yeah Serena, want to add all of you are experience in malaysia right so some of the initiative that we uh, um, started is on talent so we go down from university and then now we start going down to primary so we have right. this digital ninja program where we pick primary kids who are really interested to be entrepreneur and changes and, and we teach them how to present you, we put them in internship they are like 11 and they are going to internship with all the telcos company to see what they can do how what is a real life experience doing out this so just to cultivate the entrepreneur mindset and things like that and also we go into micro entrepreneurs so we go to the rural area in Malaysia and to teach all these women at home and then like all these people like it's okay if you're not in Kuala Lumpur you're not in the city but you know you can sell through e-commerce you can sell through digital platform and then uh, we have so many success stories from that so that's one so we increase our digital economy capabilities together as a nation not just focusing on like the major cities so um, some of the feel-good stories that we have is like um, this um, stay-at-home mother making noodles so she just sells them in the market right so we, we go over there to teach them why is Facebook marketing how do you sell an e-commerce platform and then now she has a little factory in in a home mm. and her husband That's quit a great. job to help her out so this is really this is what we are looking for to help a nation grow not just the tech people the educated no everyone should get involved in the right. economy yeah. right yes and equality is so important and also uh, the i use the feminism the you know a, a world where women are safe and can um, have good education and can work and contribute yeah um it's a better place for everyone and i also think it's um, it's it's a waste of talent, and it's ha a waste of half of the population if they can contribute. And uh, also, the women need to step up, yeah. and they need not to be afraid of failing because I think that's also something a lot of people do. That the men they go out and you know, they sell themselves, uh, but uh, women also need to go out and and you know take take the space. Arzish, would you like to comment on the fact that uh, when, when we're talking about uh, the role that women can play, um, in terms of your experience, how many uh, female entrepreneurs have you seen coming up in Pakistan and whether or not the opportunities for both genders are the same or are there obstacles for women which are not there for men in our country in particular? I think there's, there's obviously obstacles. Uh, there's obviously the situation 
uh, the situation is not same for both genders but that's that's like a global issue at this time yeah sure. and we need to work together to fix that right uh, but in pakistan if i specifically look at now the professional sector or the entrepreneurial industry we see a lot of women leaders coming up a lot of entrepreneurs of startup companies who are working in you know leadership positions in a lot of tech companies but also in the corporate sector and in the media industry in a lot of industries right uh, but at some points i think the the problem is that you know so in our conference we try a lot to ensure diversity and bring in more you know female uh, entrepreneurs and investors and we had a lot of participation as well right okay. but at sometimes it becomes difficult to kind of find these women leaders from different but industries. is there some work happening towards encouraging the participation or the empowering obviously, them obviously obviously this I, i think uh, specifically with our case we tried very hard uh, but i think now the industry is really Uh, they they've understood the problem and now everyone tries really hard to kind of you know work work more towards recognizing uh, all these amazing women who've done well not just in tech but also in other industries right there are a lot of uh, female speakers that flown from outside pakistan saba from silicon valley she works at global silicon valley labs she's the director of business development nahid is here from london okay. and the two amazing women sitting alongside we so i, I think it just it just takes more energy to find them but they're there they have done a lot of work and we need to recognize that and we need to make sure that our efforts toward you know building the tech ecosystem in Pakistan uh, in, in these efforts we encourage diversity and kind of have participation from both the genders right okay uh, christian you wanted yeah. to say something Three years ago, I think, uh, in Oslo Innovation Week, we decided that we want to have at least 50% female speakers. And since it is a tech conference, you know, we had to look. Because it is, you know, it, but, it, but they are there. Um, so uh, we had uh, the opening. We only had female speakers, and we didn't announce it. And nobody really d- took notice. And this year, we managed to have 51% female speakers that's great yeah that's so great. you know it's and it, and they're good speakers i mean you know it's it's not like yeah for me in terms of what the local community in pakistan is facing or the um the ideas that we're working towards in terms of making um innovative solutions or um entrepreneurship in pakistan commonplace as well um and if we're breaking it down to just providing solutions then you know we have a large number of the rural community and a large part of that population is also female and they're doing a lot in their respective communities right and they're doing they have small solutions or small business or they're working in their houses or you know there's a small group of women who will do something together then i don't know i'm not aware of any efforts which are uh, uh, sort of targeted towards uh bringing together that part into also the larger spectrum of the entrepreneurship community in Pakistan i don't know mashood or arzish can also answer better but you can talk about uh, uh with regards to the um way malaysia has outreach uh, re- sort of uh, try to reach a particular communities and bring them together what yeah. goes into that yeah so so for us we don't want anybody to get left behind right so is we are moving towards the digital economy era no one should be left behind um, regardless if you're educated you're not yeah everyone has a smartphone if you can operate a smartphone you can use it so so we call it e usahawan which is our e entrepreneur program so we our team go out there to the rural area just to conduct um trainings conduct how do you sell on facebook what what would you, what tools do you use you know like how do you get your things out there how do you, th- i think these people they just need to be taught you know because um they were not taught they were just say that you know make your wares cook it and then they sell it to the market and you know like that is your day to day you know when when we go out there we teach them all this we give them the tools and you know you open up you know open up like, wow i can do so much more so we have also p- um people um um making traditional musical instruments and i mean like the demand is not really there in malaysia but mm-hmm. this then we taught them to sell it on ebay and then they like they got they got um they got um business from portugal from us looking for this traditional musical instruments then suddenly this guy is like wow you know i have this i don't have to go out there you know i i can make what i love 
and but you know so many people benefit from it and then the community benefit <laughs> for it so it's like it's no longer a sunset business yeah and now he, he can teach other people how to do it right and you know the community can focus on it's an industry for the, their own community right yeah so this is what we're really going for right you would like to ask him of course there's a, you know huge market in our rural areas as well there is a wider um, aspects if you look at Pakistani society right mm -hmm. along with other hypocrisies this is one of the hypocrisies um, if you look at the lower cater of the uh, bottom of the pyramid women are entrepreneurs women are professionals working as maids in our houses yeah but if, as you move up to the middle class and the top class somehow this mindset comes in that women well if you are working maybe you need to work and that's, that's something somehow something bad if you look at uh, statistically, women in Pakistan in high school are 33% more likely to have A plus than boys. They are outperforming boys. Yeah. In professionals, they bring a different level of management exp uh, outlook towards more empathetic view. It's not just quantitative and actually tell you what in future creativity is more important, which requires empath empathy. And I think women are typically more empathic than men. And I think what we are seeing in the West as well, they're bringing, they have KPIs in corporations that certain percentage of women should be in leadership roles, certain percentage of women should be in different teams. And because that brings, they see the value that the different divergent perspective actually adds better, p the results in better products, better business models, better customer experience, yeah. better customer satisfaction, all those kind of things. And I think we have to start doing that. And finally, I would like to say that I think more women probably are graduating from professional colleges in Pakistan, but unfortunately, I think equal percentage of women are actually not utilizing in their field. It's a, such a waste of talent. And I think, again, coming back to some of the mindsets that we talked about earlier, it has to move forward. And also women have to be stepping up. When a family can pony up 10 lakh rupees or 50, 20 lakh rupees for dowry for their daughter's wedding, why can't they put the same amount of money on her education? She'll be able to not just afford her own wedding, yeah. but she'll be able to support 10 other women. Yeah, I think we should like to add something regarding the um, engagement of the rural community with the larger uh, community of entrepreneurs in Pakistan, whether or not they're being brought into uh, the circle as well, or is, are there any efforts underway towards that? So, so over the years, I think a lot of organizations have been working on kind of rural entrepreneurship, right? So yeah. AKRSP, NRSP, PRSP, all these people. There's obviously Akhuwat, which has done a lot of good work. So I think on the grassroots level, when we see the impact of these programs and programs like, you know, like the BISP, Men's Income Support Program. So, so we see that, you know, this, this kind of rural community, they are very entrepreneurial, not, you know, tech entrepreneurship, but entrepreneurship in general. Sure. Yeah. You know, starting businesses yeah. with very small amounts, right? So Khuwat gives a loan of like 30,000 rupees. A and I think we need to somehow figure out how we can, uh, you know, empower them with technology, right? So kind of exactly. uh, yeah. take that to the next step. And I think USF is doing some work on this, the Universal Services Fund. Uh, but as, as technology ecosystem, I, I think Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad has been the most focused areas. Now Peshawar has become a tech hub as well. Uh, but we need to collectively work together to go to, you know, tier two, tier three cities. So over the past two years, Startup Grind has, you know, now been active in Abtabad and in Sawat and in Faisalabad and Gujranwala and in, in cities beyond the KLIP region, right? Because uh, I, I think there the need is even higher because in all these big cities there are a lot of opportunities but in a city like Aptabad Startup Grand is probably the only organization fostering entrepreneurship. Right, as if we, are, we are short on time but so I'd just like to ask another question that was in my mind uh, before we conclude. Um, we were earlier talking about um, also uh, bringing uh, a much younger um, uh, population also involved in uh, this uh, program. Um, such conferences as Startup Grind are obviously bringing together people from all over the world with the community uh, in the, the local community in Pakistan. Is, are there any efforts also underway with in terms of infiltrating this knowledge even further towards uh, the, the level of young children or at our you know, universities or our high schools or you know, um, primary schools? Is there any further infiltration which is trickling down and th that sort of effort is being made in that way? Yes, yeah, so, so one of the things that we do is this 
we have university chapters, right? So in NUST and in FAST and a lot of other amazing universities, Startup Connect has university chapters. But with this conference specifically, we reached out to all of the amazing universities, specifically trying to connect the software uh, graduates or the CS students. And we had, you know, groups of students come in from NUST and FAST and Air University and Bahria and even Abbottabad and Sawat and, and Lahore, right? So Fatma Juna University, I think, sent a big group of students. Uh, and we made the participation kind of free for them because, you know, they're students at, and we need to inspire them, right? And they're coming in from all these different cities, making a very long journey just to come and see and hear these people talk, right? So we had right. more than, I think, 500 students come in from across the country. Right, okay. So we're just going to conclude now. And I want each one of you to just um, say whatever it is that you would like to say to um, anybody who's watching who wants to become an entrepreneur who's working on an idea or who's part of um, uh, a startup um, and they're working towards building it up further in terms of your experiences and your particular fields of expertise what is it that you um, can tell them uh, is what they need to do or what they should work on or what are your basic um, takeaways for the people who are watching well i think that um uh, entrepreneurs even uh, they they should look into when they see they they see a problem and uh, they should address it to the proper authority and see if they can do some uh, work together and maybe through um, startup grind or other hubs uh, university hubs or other but but I think if you start finding you know things that irritates you and and try to fix it and and make a business out of it um and just do it i guess uh and um the other thing is to to the people that actually work in the in the, the bureaucracy um they need i think we should do a lot of pitches for them because they need to learn yeah from the startup community and in the at least in norway there's become like a fatigue because there's a lot of conferences and a lot of pitches and and it's not really that the way you get an investor because usually you have to groom them for a long time but the point is that it gives you in a very short period of time an overall uh, what's happening so i would um you know suggest that um uh, or others would uh, do pitches for the government and the city government and that they will actually show up with the you know with the people and it's not that they're gonna have to buy anything it's just yeah. to to make them aware yeah. of what's there yeah and use the startups because if the if the governments don't do this they will be not relevant because and then you know yeah if you want people sure. to pay taxes then you have to give them good services yeah is this Pakistan as a country, I believe, is very well positioned to become a leading tech hub in terms of producing good tech talent. We already have all these amazing people who have built, you know, unicorns, who have built million dollar companies who are working in uh, leadership positions in some of the world's leading tech companies. We now have a number of startups which are produced inside Pakistan. Uh, but the way forward with this is to bring a lot of people back to Pakistan, connect them to Pakistan and show them the real face of Pakistan, which the Western media isn't showing yet. Uh, and, and, and then promote Pakistan to fix our image problem, right? So we need to brand Pakistan around the globe, go out and just shout that, you know, we are a tech destination yeah. and we have the numbers to yeah. prove this, right? So that's, that's our goal. Right. Serena? I think like for community builder like Azish, um, what um, you should do is um, to engage more with the government representatives, right? So if you engage more with them, because sometimes um, they don't see what you see and you are on the ground, so you know what's going on. So the more you engage, um, so the, the more you can encourage policy changes, so they can actually understand what's going on. Because I think at the end of the day, everyone wants to do good for the country. Yeah. yeah. And for all the Pakistani uh, entrepreneurs out there, if you're thinking about it, you know, just stop thinking, just do it. Yeah. So I have um, just three things to Pakistani entrepreneurs and everybody out there. Believe it, have courage, and be curious. So if you believe it, you'll figure out a way. Have courage, pick up the phone, contact us, reach out to all the uh, successful Pakistanis, and be curious. Have a learning mindset and challenge assumption. These are the three things. If you do it, 
you'll you'll be successful. Great. Thank you so much for being with us, all of you, and for sharing your ideas and, of course, talking about your experiences. And I'm sure all of our viewers really benefited from this conversation. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, well, this is the end of our show. Uh, we, of course, talked to different people who are engaged with the Startup Grind Conference and who um, have the particular areas of expertise in trying to uh, foster uh, such conversations and um, sort of encourage the innovative solutions, the use of technology that is much needed for the economic growth of Pakistan. And of course, we're looking towards our youth uh, for them to move forward, for them to provide us solutions to a far, um, a wide range of uh, problems that we face. And if you want to do something, there's something that bothers you as you heard the conversation, then you can try and come up with a solution as well. And then you can bring forward uh, uh, entrepreneurship skills that you have and encourage other people to do the same. And that is what we hope from the youth of our country. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you will benefit from this conversation and be able to do something that you would really like to do. Thank you. It's goodbye.